All right, this is the chapter five, learning target number eight video. Uh, and the learning target is, I can apply the concept of ratios and unit rates to solve real world problems, which would include unit price, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and constant speed. Okay, so really everything that we've done in chapter four and five really comes together here. And now we've already done a lot of this actually. I mean, if you think back to like this, I mean, that's what this is. I mean, the stuff we did in learning target seven, learning target number four, five, six, we've done so much of this, okay? So it just kind of maybe takes a little bit of a step further, but pretty much it's the same stuff. So um, I want you guys to really, hopefully be really understanding ratios and proportions once we're done here. First of all, let's get this word right here figured out. We've talked about it on, we've talked about it on uh, review sheets. Whoops, unit price, go ahead and write that. Now, unit rate is kind of a general term that I like to say it's the amount of something per one. That was your definition that you were asked to, asked to remember um, in Chapter 4. So now let's learn unit price, which kind of is a special type of unit rate. Okay, And what it means is when, when you want to know the unit price, you want to know the cost per one of an item okay okay and I, and I and I know I know you know that you guys just need to know the word unit price so if you knew that you could get um, you could get five shirts for twenty five dollars that's not right sorry just you didn't sorry if you wrote that five twenty five dollars cost you could get five shirts for twenty five dollars the unit price would say okay well then how much is one shirt and that's what this is saying it's saying the cost per one of whatever that item is whatever the item is you're buying okay so in this case it would be five dollars per shirt okay so we're gonna have to figure out unit price it's really what we're gonna do here and um, as you can see when you're talking about buying stuff by the pounds um, this is what it means I mean you know how much you paid for two pounds and we want to know cost per pound again unit price the cost per one pound the cost per one of an item in this case per pound of that item okay so let's start with the mango so we gotta find the unit price for each of these fruits okay now hopefully you're already doing this ahead of me hopefully because this is where we always do unit rates and unit prices and pretty much everything we do when multiplication and division is involved is going to come right back to proportions okay now one thing you gotta make note of and you'll remember this from chapter four is when you're doing unit price money must write this money must always be on top okay and the reason why is because remember the unit rate always has to be in the bottom one. The per one always has to be in the second term. So we know that we're going to be comparing pounds and money. So we want to make sure that we put money in the top, pounds in the bottom, money in the top, pounds in the bottom. Now we know that um, since we're doing unit price, there's where our one's going to go. Just like we did with unit rate. And it's the same thing. It's just kind of the, we're just kind of refining our skills of it. Okay, this ratio over here, I still consider that my fake ratio, just like I've taught you from the beginning. And that fake ratio is whatever is given, which in this case would be right here. I know that I, for $2.60, I can get two pounds of mango. Okay, now, a couple ways you could do this. First of all, whenever you do a unit rate, you know that it's easy to make any number become one by simply dividing by that number. Okay, so in this case, dividing by two. Well, if you divide the number of mangoes, or the number of pounds of mangoes by two, then you must do the same to your amount of money, and that tells you that that is going to be um, $1.30, okay? Okay, so now, now we'll do the next one. Let's go ahead and do pair, okay? Start with your proportion. Keep our labels all the same. We're not going to change a thing because it's given us the same, same ratio of, as far as labels go here. And we know that, again, that 1 is always going to go in the bottom right because that's what unit rate proportions are. Okay. 
So we go up to our pairs and we say, okay, what was that fake ratio that they gave us? Okay, it's right there. We said that for $3.50, I could get 2.5 pounds, okay? Now, you know that obviously you're just dividing by 2.5 and dividing by 2.5. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you could always cross multiply and then divide, right? It's the same thing, does not matter. Um, and then I'll go ahead and get out the calculator here to do this one. It's 3.5 divided by 2.5, and that's gonna give me 1.4, which we've gotta turn into money. So we gotta know that we must add on those zero pennies, because we don't just leave it as 1.4 because it's money, okay? Okay, I'd like you all to pause, and I want you to do the oranges just like this okay you better have already done the oranges you better not be just continuing to watch but only you know if that's true okay so we start the same way putting labels on only labels on only there you go now we'll put our one right there because that's what we're trying to figure out per pound so we're finding the unit price and I'm gonna put my fake ratio which I'm getting from right there which I know is for $2.70, I can get two and 25 hundredths of a pound. So I'm going to divide by 2.25 to both the top and the bottom. And that is going to give me 2.7 divided by 2.25 gives me 1.2. Again, we've got to make sure that we add on the zero because we're talking in terms of money. Okay, so up here cost per pound, you know that this is going to be $1.30. This is going to be a dollar forty, and this is going to be a dollar twenty. Okay. Now you know the unit prices, so now you know you can figure out anything. Once you know per pound, you can figure out any amount of mango, pear, or oranges that you want to buy by just simply multiplying the unit price by however many you want to buy. Oh, I want to buy seven mangoes. There you go. Multiply by seven. Okay. Okay, now the question down here, which I'm sorry that this is, looks the way it does, but I think yours looks better than mine. How much more do pears cost per pound than mango? Now this is a good time to kind of go over this word right here. Whenever you hear it, how many more, how much more, how much taller, how much bigger, how much uh, more, I think I already said that one, but you get the point. Whenever you hear those things, you got to know that we're talking about subtraction. Okay? So we want to know how much more the pears cost than the mangoes per pound. So we're going to take $1.40 and we are going to subtract $1.30. And we're going to find that they are 10 cents more. The pears are 10 cents more than the mangoes. Okay? Let's go ahead and go to the next page. Okay, another very typical unit price question. These are called, everybody write this please. These are called better buy questions. Whoops, if I could spell. Not the correct buy, don't tell Godfrey. Better buy questions, okay. Now, going back to this for just a moment, um, I want you all to know that there is a question just like this on the test where you have to just... You're given a table just like this, and you have to break it down and find the unit prices, okay? Just like this one. There's going to be a word problem, and I'm going to give you brand A and brand B, and I'm going to ask you to tell me which one is the better deal after you found the unit price, okay? So here we got, I'm going to do brand A over here. I'm going to do brand B right here. And again, we're just going to find the unit price. So I'm going to start with my proportion. Now, since I'm doing unit price, remember the money always goes on top and the item's always going to go on the bottom. So, in this case, it's money being compared to ounces. So, I'm going to go ahead and do it for both of them. Just get it out of the way. We got money being compared to ounces and money being compared to ounces. Okay? The other thing I'm going to go ahead and put on there is my one because I'm going to figure out per ounce. That's the unit price, right? Now we put on our fake ratio. Okay, brand A costs $3.84. 
for 16 ounces. Okay. Brand B costs $4.50 for 25 ounces. So you're getting a little more, but you're also paying a little more. But you want to figure this out so that you know what you're actually getting, which one's the better buy. Like, I, I don't want to spend more per ounce if I don't have to. I don't think any of us want to just throw money away. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get out my calculator. And I know that I'm dividing by 16 there. So I'm going to do $3.84, and I'm going to divide it by 16. And that's going to give me 24 cents. I'll do the same thing over there. I know I'm dividing by 25. So I'm going to do $4.50 divided by 25. And I'm going to get 18 cents. So right now, you should already be making the connection saying, well, I can already see which one's the better buy. Okay, one is cheaper than the other. Okay, brand A is going to cost 24 cents per ounce. Brand B costs 18 cents per ounce. Which brand is the better buy? Obviously, it's brand B. Why? Because it is 6, whoops, 0 0.06 per ounce cheaper. You're getting the same exact amount of ounces, right? You're, you're getting one ounce and one ounce, okay? But you're paying a little bit less, okay? You're paying six cents less. That would add up. What if you needed 500 ounces of this, of this juice for a party? You need 500 ounces. Do you think that six cents is going to make a difference over the, over, if you're getting 500 ounces? Absolutely, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the next page, okay? Um, these are more better buy questions. Okay, I'm going to maybe do one of these. I'm not going to do them all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do, I'll do the batteries question. Okay, so I'm going to do two proportions here. I'm going to put one in the bottom right. Now, since we're doing unit price, we always want to put our money on the, on the top. And in this case, batteries on the bottom. I know it gives us to us batteries per dollar, but it doesn't matter because unit price always has money in the top. Because we want to know how much one item costs. So that's the batteries in this case. So we got batteries, batteries, money, money. Okay. I look at my thing here. Three batteries for four dollars and eighty cents. There it is. And I'm getting three batteries. I know that I'm dividing by three, so I've got to do four eighty divided by three. So I go ahead and do four point eight divided by three, and that gives me one point six. Now we've got to know that since we're talking about money, we're talking about one dot one one dollar bill, six dimes which equals $1.60, okay? Same thing here. You know that it is $14.76 for 12 batteries. I know that I'm dividing by 12, and I gotta do the same up here. So 14.76 divided by 12 is gonna give me $1.23. So which one is the better buy per battery. This one right here, right guys? You're paying a lot less per battery. You're paying, if you wanted to figure it out, do $1.60 minus 123. Gotta borrow. You're paying 37 cents more if you go with this one over here. I'd rather pay 37 cents cheaper and 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 get the better buy. Okay? Um, you can try these other ones on your own. If you want some practice and then you want me to check them tomorrow, try these three. But I think you guys are getting it. It's just unit price. Same thing over and over again. Okay. This one here. I think I'm a little bit zoomed in. There we go. A grocery store advertises weekly specials for fruit. Write the unit price. Okay. Um, this one right here on the test. I think this is the one that's on the test actually. Okay. So we can do, we'll do four proportions. Actually, I would like you to pause and do these four proportions. Okay, so I already kind of put the proportions on here for you so you can kind of see. Notice money's on the top, so it's pretty pretty easy here. We have $3.01 for seven oranges. I want to know how much one orange costs because that's the unit price. So I'm going to do 3.01 divided by seven. That's going to give me 43 cents per orange. Okay, next one. I know that the kiwis cost $1.85 for five kiwis. I want to know how much one kiwi costs, so I'm going to do 1.85 divided by 5, 
and that gives me 37 cents. Okay, for the plums, I did money to plums. I know it's $2.88 for nine plums. I want to know how much one plum costs, and that is going to give me 2.88 divided by nine, which is 32 cents. Okay, and the last one, I know that it's $1.68 for three pairs. I want to know how much one pair is. So we're going to do 1.68 divided by three, which is 0.56, and there you go. You found all your unit prices. That would go there, that would go there, that would go there, whoops, right there, and then this one would go here, okay? What would the total price be? Now, whenever you see total price, you got to automatically think in addition, right, or multiplication, but this isn't going to be subtraction because you want to know what the total cost for 13 pairs and 10 plums would be, okay? Well, if you know that one pair costs 56 cents, can't we just multiply it by 13 and see what that gives us? So times 13, okay, that gives me $7.28, okay? And then 10 plums, I know that plums are 32 cents times 10. Now I know that when I multiply by numbers with one followed by zero, I can just, follow, I can just move the decimal um, to the right that many places, however many zeros there are. So I know that that's $3.20. So I'm paying $7.28 for the, the pears. I'm paying $3.20 for the plums. I'm getting $7.28 plus $3.20. It's going to give me, hopefully I'm doing this right, $10.48. So that would be my answer right there. Okay? Let's go on the, well, I don't know if it's the next page or not. I think it is. Okay? All right, this question right here, uh, it's a constant speed. Now, we haven't done much with constant speed except for a couple problems here or there. Three riders try out for one spot on a bike team with different coaches for different distances with different times. That's a lot of different stuff. Okay, what factors should the coaches consider when picking a rider? Okay, so you can see rider number one, he rode, or she, rode five miles in 20 minutes, so five miles in 20 minutes. Okay, that's one. Rider two did six miles in 30 minutes. Okay, and rider number three did eight miles in 40 minutes. Okay, what factors should the coaches consider when picking a rider? Well, I mean, there's a lot of factors that they could have. I mean, you want to, they, they really sh should probably pick, I mean, if you really want to be like, um, like have a good team and pick the best rider, wouldn't you want them all either running the same or riding the same distance or riding for the same amount of time? Kind of make it a competition. Like not necessarily just say, hey, you guys just ride and we'll see, whatever. I mean, actually keep things consistent. Make them ride for 20 minutes and see who gets the furthest. Or, the way that makes more sense, have them all ride, ride five miles and see how long it takes them. See who takes them. See who takes it the longest. Okay. Um, which rider should they pick? Well, if you simplify this, they're going. This person here, rider number one, went. It took them five minutes per mile, right? This person here took them one mile, it took them five minutes to ride one mile, and same thing here, one mile to ride five minutes. Are they all the same unit rates? And I know I put the one in the top, but just to save a little bit of time, but they're all the same. So realistically, I, I mean, we don't know which one, they're all, they're, they're all riding at the same rate, but the problem is, is when you ride a bike, I think you guys know as well as anybody, you're not always riding at the same rate all the time. You go faster, then you slow down a little bit, then you go faster. So really, this wouldn't be a very good tryout procedure, okay? And reflect, we already did. We said they need to keep all the distances the same or something like that, okay? Here, right here, if a bike cyclist travels three miles in 15 minutes, hopefully you're all identifying that that would be my fake ratio, how far will he travel in 25 minutes? So what we're going to do is 
couple different ways to do it. You, I'll use unit rate this time. I know that he can travel three minutes or three miles in 15 minutes. Why well, won't use unit rate on this one? And then you can just look and say, well, there you go. How many miles would that be? I mean, that, that's everything that this comes down to. And then we can just cross multiply and divide and see what we get. Okay. Get out my calculator. I know that's going to be 75 divided by 15. It's going to be 5. So he, re he rode for 5 miles. Okay. All these are so, so basic. I mean, we've been doing so many of these. We'll do this one real quick. Okay. Here's this one. Right there would be my fake ratio, right, everybody? So you know that it's going to be six words in four seconds. And then you know it's going to be words to seconds. And you're either going to be given an actual amount of words or an actual amount of seconds. There's 10. Cross, multiply, divide. You find that it would be 15 words per 10 seconds or in 10 seconds. Okay? Go to the next page. All right. Here's this truck, okay? It's kind, of, it's kind of already done for you. We'll just kind of look through it. Mr. Anthony drives his truck at a speed of 45 miles per hour. I want everybody to make a note. That is a fake ratio. I know you look at it and it doesn't look like the traditional fake ratio that I've taught you. You're used to seeing two numbers, like you did on all these things here. You saw a fake ratio, there's your two numbers, okay? It's a little bit different than that, but you just got to realize that what this is saying is that this truck traveled 45 kilometers in one hour per one hour. Remember, per means one. Okay, so I want you all to make sure you know that that is definitely your fake ratio or your fratio as we've been calling it. Okay, so you know that if if that's your fake ratio and you want to know there's your there's your real information and there's this if then kind of statement right if he was traveling at this then how far will he go in this like the train question from um, Thursday if you guys will remember the train question okay so we'll go ahead and bring our our labels down kilometers per hour and kilometers in hours so I'll put in my fake ratio 45 kilometers in one hour and then I'm either going to be given a specific number of kilometers or a specific number of hours Obviously, I'm being given hours and I'm being asked for a distance, okay? What am I doing to my number of hours? Timesing two. So what do I got to do here? There you go. 90 kilometers in two hours, okay? And then there's the answer for it, okay? Now, how far does he travel in five hours? Well, again, you know your, you know your unit rate, 45 kilometers in one hour. There's your, there's your fake ratio. Well, now you want to know five hours the same thing times five times five and he would get 225 kilometers okay here exactly the same type of question as the train question or this truck question right there doesn't look like it but that's your fake ratio so you know it's going to be kilometers over hours and then your proportion would look just like this so it's 175 kilometers per Per one hour, well then how far will he travel in three hours? Times three, times three. So 175 times three is going to give you 525. Okay. And here's the same, again, same exact type of question, guys. And it makes perfect sense because it's saying this train will travel 65 meters in one second, right? So what if I want to know in two seconds? And, that's, and we're just asking how many um, meters will it travel? Well, you're doubling that, so you've got to double your distance, right? And you're going to get 130. Okay, and I think that's going to do it. So um, I, I think I think you guys are getting, I mean, it's the same thing kind of over and over again. So I, I think you guys are really starting to get it, but um, this will be your second to last video before the, before the uh, chapter test, which will be coming up here soon. All right, see you guys.